everyone, and welcome to the episode of the Rails API series. In this episode right here, the third part of the JWT series, um, yeah, I'm going to be showing you guys how to integrate JWT inside of your endpoint. So in this case right here, we have a controller, and if you've been following along, this is the part we use to actually create the sign-in. So right now, um, if I, I'm going to walk you through a little bit about what we have actually done. And I'm going to show you how to actually generate the token inside of here. Um, and basically, you know, we can then, uh, you know, send that back with the response. Uh, and, and so if we take a look at the users create JSON builder right now, we are sending back authentication token. And this is currently coming from the database. So what we're going to do is obviously we're going to remove this authentication token in favor of the JWT token that we're going to generate. So in here, in the session controller, now we're going to uh, generate JWT equals uh, JWT not encode. So we have to think about a little bit, you know, what kind of data do we want to put inside of our token? So in this case, we just, we're, you know, we don't have any permission. This system is quite simple right now. It's our invoicing application. So we just want to be able to create a user and uh, you create a session. So we want to verify with the email um, that, you know, the password's correct. And if the password's correct, actually we should do it over here. So JWT encode, uh, and then basically we, here we can do user ID, uh, at user.id. And we're going to use the rails secret. So, um, rails dot application dot secrets dot secret key base all right and basically we're going to do hs 256 so um you know this data right now we're just going to hard code it like this that's fine but essentially what we really want to do is we want to have it inside of a constant or some kind of configuration file you know, just in case we want to be able to use the same. Um, so one thing that JWT is very useful for is for microservices. So, you know, if you are into microservices and you have like a ton of services that you want to be able to authenticate, like, for example, you have one database that kind of like, you know, you can use to authenticate multiple services with one user. So, for example, you have a commenting service or like a video service and they're all running in separate apps and then you want to be able to use one user. JWT is also very useful for that, but you have to be mindful of how you actually do the configuration. For now, we're going to hard code everything, but hard coding everything is not essentially the best way to do it. But just so that we understand the flow, we're going to go a little bit slow because this is something new we're covering. Uh, so now what we're going to have here is we're going to get the actual JWT token and, uh, you know, we need to pass in the locals token, token status created is fine. And basically, um, you know, eventually we will abstract this away, but for now, this will be just fine. So we'll have user ID and, uh, we're going to return the user, the, the actual token, a JWT token, um, along with, so we can actually also do an expiry. So we can do exp. And here we're going to do time dot now plus two weeks. So our token is going to be valid for two weeks. Again, this is not the cleanest way to do it. As I mentioned, we should this should be inside of your configuration file so that when you do load it, it's consistent across your microservices app. Or even if you have one app, it's still consistent. Like, you know, you're not, it's not in your code. All right. So um, that should be it. Uh, so what we're going to be doing in the next ep in this episode, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to authenticate and we're going to test this out. Uh, so now we have a locals that we pass in. So we need to, you know, handle this in our view. So we're not no longer going to use, um, you know, authentication token. We're going to have user and then we're going to have um, JSON dot uh, token do and then basically token. So that's the local variable we passed in. Um, and essentially, this is going to be set to the actual token that we have in our controller. So let's try this out. I'm going to head over into pause. And let me resize that just a tad. Put that in the in view like that. 
So I'm going to open up a invoice paw. All right, so let me close that. Delete. All right. So here we are. We have this, uh, you know, we have this this old um, this this file that we have in the sessions for signing in. Uh, I have a body with email and password. Uh, so let's try and do a call. So we're going to get an error in this case because we haven't even started the server yet. So Rails S, let's just start the server. I mean, might be nice to start the server before we send any request. I send the request, I get a 500 error. Uh, so yeah, undefined local variable method token. All right, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so I um, it was fine. I referenced it wrong, my bad. So I just need to use JWT because that's what we called it over here. Uh, I'm gonna send this back. All right, so now we have 201 created and you can see here the user um okay that's strange should not be authentication token anymore um let's see what's going on over here so it should be uh sessions ah okay so that's for the creation we need to go into here uh, and then we need to remove this guy in favor of json.token and token that's the correct one that's the correct view Head over here, do another authentication. All right, so now you can see we have user email and then we have token. So now, you know, we've kind of like automated the, the you know, token generation part. Um, what do we do next? Well, um, in the next episode, now that we have, you know, we've kind of like generated our token, we've got the secret, everything working, and we got our algorithm, everything set up. The next thing we're gonna need to do is, you know, how do we send a subsequent request? Uh, it's very similar, in fact, to what we were doing before. Um, so if we take a look at the older request over here, so you see I use X user email and an X user token. It's going to be happening in the header as well, but it's going to just be done a little bit differently than what we're doing now. Before, we would need to send in the email uh, and we need to send in the token. But essentially, what we would do now is we would not even send in um, any email or this auth token anymore it's going to be something else we're going to modify the header to fit with what we have uh, and then basically the next time we send it we need to implement um you know in our controller upon every request we need to detect the jwt token all right so i don't want to go too much into the theory part of it um you know now that we know how to generate the token and, and return it to the client um, the next step would be to let the client send the request back with the token and then we decode the token and then we use that token to get the current user. All right, so that's it going to be it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. This is a uh, free episode. So um, if you enjoyed this episode, give us a like. Also share this video with your friends and family. Also check out the next episode on our website. Um, and basically you learn how to use JWT inside of your application, whether you're working on a microservice or you're working on a monolith. Um, if you have an API endpoint and if you're building your apps where you have a React app consuming your endpoint or you have a um, iOS app or Android app, whatever kind of app you have that consumes your endpoint, you can use JWT to authenticate and secure your endpoints. All right, guys, with that, I want to wrap up this episode. Check out our website and become a member to get access to all of our content. Uh, with that, I want to wrap it up for you guys. See you guys in the next one.